Hello everyone. So in this talk, we are going to talk about what has changed with Windows VMs on top of Ovirt 4.4. So before we get started, a little, bit, a little bit about me. My name is Gal Zeidman and I'm a software engineer working at Reddit for, in the integration team for around two and a half years. Um, since I've started, I've worked on uh, the Python 2 to 3 porting, the Virtio Win driver installer that we are going to talk about today, cockpit over the installation flow, and OCP on top of over it, which is my current um, focus. So before we dive too deep into what has changed, let's first understand the motivation for having an installer. As a Linux users, we are kind of accustomed to have a package manager that installs the software, software for us or alternatively follow a long readme and um, stack overflow tips until stuff are working. But as a Windows user, this is not the experience that you expect. You expect to have some kind of executable where you click next, next, next on, sometimes configure a few options and stuff are magically working. This is why we need an installer on top of, for our uh, Windows virtual machines. The installer aims to provide Windows users with a comfortable way to get everything that is required for the best experience of a Windows virtual machine on top of Overt. Without it, users will need to manually install and remove each driver and agent, sometimes in a specific sequence because there are dependencies. And I think that you can all agree that this is a task that is very error prone and is a pain to perform on many VMs or alternatively automate. And another um, big plus to having an installer is the fact that we are using Windows MSI's. MSI provides us with uh, very good features for Windows, such as very detailed logs, a safe registry, writes and reads, and probably the most important one is transactions and rollback support. We can always return to the previous state before the installation has started and not hurt anything, basically. So what has changed? The first thing and probably the biggest one is we are finally upstream first. We have the same source code for upstream and downstream. In before over 4.4, those two projects were completely separate. Downstream and upstream had different uh, source code and therefore were hard, hard to maintain and not open source. This is the downstream part. So what we did after we created the installer is that we contributed it to the Fedora project or more correctly, the Virta Win project inside Fedora. And it is maintained by Overt and Virta Win engineers um, to provide the best um, user experience for all platforms. Plus, we've added support for Microsoft supported Windows versions. We've added support for Windows 10, 2K16 and 2K19, something that hasn't existed officially uh, before Overt 4.4. And of course, if stuff has changed, the docs has changed as well. So we changed the docs and I provided here a link to the updated doc documents for installing the Windows virtual machines. So now let's have a look at a short installation demo that will basically show the process of creating a virtual machine and installing and uninstalling the drivers and agent. Now we assume that uh, the Virtual Win ISO and the Windows ISO are already present in the engine. So I provided here a link to where you can download the Virtual Win ISO and also a short Ansible playbook that will upload the ISO to the engine VM. So you can have the same starting point as this demo. Okay, so this is how our rev environment should look like. I'm now on the disk page and I see that I have the Virtio Win disk and the Windows 10 disk. Now I will go 
to create a virtual machine. I will create a brand new virtual machine with Windows 10 operating system. I will add a name and create a disk and attach it to the over network. Of course, we need to set up the memory and CPU for that virtual machine. And as you can see, we have our Windows 10 VM. Now, we need to click on Run Once. And the first time that we create the virtual machine, we need to install Windows on it. So we don't want to boot up from our hard disk. We want to boot up from a CD-ROM. And we also need to click on attach the Windows guest tool CD. So we will have the drivers available during the installation. So I'm starting up for CD-ROM, clicking on the, on the attached the attach CD and opening a console to the Windows virtual machine. Now the installation is the same as any Windows 10 installation and I will try to skip the boring parts of it. The main uh, focus that I want to show you is that once the virtual machine is started, the hard disk is not recognized because you don't have a driver for it. That's why we needed to check that checkbox. As you can see now I'm attaching a driver and the hard disk will be recognized by the installation. Okay, after the installation has passed, we have our Windows virtual machine. We will change CD and add the VirtioWin ISO. The VirtioWin ISO contains the executable for installing basically everything that is required. The drivers, the agents and everything. Now we will take a look at a full installation on top of the Windows virtual machine. So we agree to the license. We need to check in the options to install the over guest agent because we are over users. As I said, this is a part of the Fedora project now. So you can install it on basically any virtual machine that you want. And you don't want the over guest agent if you are using a plain um, plain virtual machine. Here you can select the, the drivers. I selected the default, which is basically all of them. And now the installation will progress. Okay, as you can see, the drivers are being installed. The agent are being installed. And the installation will complete successfully. Now we will check to see that everything actually got installed. The first thing that we want to see is that the agents are running. They are available on the services tab. So we open task manager, go to services, sort them by their name, so it would be easy to find, and scroll till we will find one of the services that we installed, such as the Ovid guest or the Spice agent. Okay, now that we have seen that uh, the services are installed, we can look, go to device manager and see that um, devices are recognized with their drivers. So here just select a few devices and you can see, for example, the QXL controller, We have a network to the machine. We have a match 
better view of the machine currently. At, it, at that point, we have a virtual machine that is acting very good. We have all the drivers and services installed on top of it, and we can proceed. But what if we want to uninstall the, the drivers for some reason? Well, we can go to, like, like every Windows installation, we can go to apps and features and just uninstall it. So we find the Virtio guest tools and click on uninstall. Here we are uninstalling the software. Now everything is removed. And we can view the logs. As I said uh, before, MSI provides us with very rich logs to understand what, what has been going on in the installation. And they are available for, um, for installation and for uninstallation. So we go to the temp directory and we can see that we have logs from the current installation and uninstallation right here. So now that we saw the process of installing with the GUI, with the UI, let's see how to install with the CLI. Now, this flow is mostly for automation of the installation or uninstallation of the drivers and agents. Mostly when we have um, a large set of Windows VMs, we don't want to manually log on to each and perform the process. So to automate it, it is very, very simple. We only need to open the command line as a admin, go to the Virtual Win CD driver, and um, install or uninstall by using the correct flag. The key here is the dash S and dash QN which basically means run this quietly and silently. Um, we can also specify the LV uh, for the log path, and we can also specify the no reset flag to prevent a reboot after the installation. Now, when we install in silent mode, we use the default uh, parameters, meaning we install all the agents and drivers beside the over guest agent. You can override that, uh, that behavior by providing properties with the add local property. Um, and here is a list of all the properties you can override. I won't go into details on each, on each of them, but they are basically the names of the driver. One thing that is important to note that currently in uh, 8.2.1 rel, we don't support um, using this with the EXE. We only support using the, using uh, overriding the properties with the MSI exec command. I hope that on 8.3, 8 we will already have support of overriding properties within the EXE. And the last thing that I want to talk about is how to know what went wrong in the installation. As I said at the beginning, MSI provides us with a very rich log file. And as you saw in the demo, once you log on to the temp directory, you can view all the logs that have been generated. Now our installer creates currently six logs for each MSI that, ins that it installs and one general log file. You can basically lo uh, look at each of them um, and see where the installation failed. So I wanted to talk about two log files, the general log file and the Virtio drivers log file, which are probably the most important ones. The general log, files, a log file contains a summary of the installation. It will tell you where the installation failed. From it, you can go to any of the sub log files to find out exactly what went wrong. When you're looking at the log file, it can be very intimidating. So I listed here two, two keys to look for, which will probably do the trick. The first thing, and it is an obvious one, is the error string. And the second one is the planned packages string. Um, it should tell you 
what is the state and action set for each component. The last log file is the product specific or the Virtio Win guest tools log file. So as you saw, we have a log file for each of the component that we install, but probably the most verbose one will be the drivers themselves because it just installs and starts services and so on. So the installation is divided into different phases and not all the phases are relevant. I listed a couple of phases that are the most relevant and probably the most uh, error prone. So in case you are querying the log file, you will be able to focus on um, a specific phase. Thank you very much. That was my presentation. I hope you enjoyed it and have a great conference.